Hi everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we are gonna be talking about the real rule for significant figures. So that means we're actually gonna be talking about errors in measurements. So let's get started. Our real rule for significant figures states that the last significant figure in the answer should be the first digit that corresponds with our absolute uncertainty. Now I want to be careful here. This is our absolute uncertainty and I want to make sure I differentiate that from relative uncertainty because you do see both of these. So absolute uncertainty is just the amount of error that's associated with a particular measurement. So say for example you use a an analytical balance in your lab. That balance has an error associated with it. That is its absolute uncertainty. You may calculate a relative uncertainty based on what you're actually weighing. So when you weigh something, you can compare that absolute uncertainty inherent in the balance to whatever you're actually weighing. And when we're talking about the real world for sig figs, make sure that you're using your absolute uncertainty up here and not your relative uncertainty. I just want to be really clear about that. So let's talk about an example. Let's say that you're doing a titration and you're obviously going to be using a burette. That burette has an absolute uncertainty associated with it. So theoretically, let's say you're using a burette. You look, usually these are etched at the very top of the burette. This burette has an absolute uncertainty of 0 0.02 milliliters. So when you're doing the titration, you may very well ask yourself, how many decimal places should I read this burette to? Should I give it one decimal place? Can I read it to two decimal places? Or can I possibly read it to three decimal places? Well, this is where you wanna look on the burette, check out what its absolute uncertainty is, and that tells you how many sig figs you should have in your measurement. So in our theoretical burette that has an absolute uncertainty of 0 0.02 milliliters, you should be able to read that to two decimal places. So here is a volume that say I've recorded in a titration, 12.35 would be the correct volume to record. Because the absolute uncertainty is there, I cannot, even if I have really good eyes, I can't go to the thousandths place. And I certainly, should give myself the benefit of the doubt of being able to read to the hundreds place because the burette says that I should be able to read there. Okay, let's talk about if you're doing a mathematical problem. So you can see here for my second example, I just have a relatively simple math problem in this case. So if I'm just using my rules of sig figs, just my regular rules of sig figs for addition, subtraction, and multiplication division, I'm going to follow my order of operations. I'm going to do my multiplication division first, which means I'm going to deal with simplifying this part of my equation first. So here's what my calculator gives me. Now I should have, let's count up my sig figs. So in my 4.01, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 five sig figs and my 15.9994 I have one two three four five six sig figs so my five here is going to limit me so my answer should have five sig figs so one two three four I should be rounding at that seven there now again because I'm not through with my calculation I'm not actually going to round I'm going to keep that um, tailing six on and I'm not going to round until the very end of my calculation. Okay, so I'm switching up to addition subtraction. This is what my calculator gives me. I switch up to counting up decimal places. So my first number, let's see, I have four decimal places, then I have three decimal places, and then here, because I'm supposed to round at that seven, I also have three decimal places. So my three is going to limit me. I should have three decimal places. So again, if I'm just using my rules of sig figs, I should round to 120.528. 
Now, I'm gonna throw a little bit of a curveball at you. What if I come to you and I say, hey, I know you got that number because you did all the math right, but I'm gonna tell you that your absolute uncertainty for this number is 0 0.05. So should you change your sig figs or should you keep your sig figs the same? Well, the real rule is gonna trump any of the rules that you use, your addition subtraction or your multiplication division or both of them in this case, because we did mixed operation, and you are gonna round using your absolute uncertainty. So in this case, because my absolute uncertainty is in the hundredths place or the second decimal place, I must then round to the hundredths place, to the second decimal place. And that is actually my correct answer according to the real rule of sig figs. Okay, we're not quite done yet. Let's get a more real world example where you might run into this um, when you're running an experiment. So let's say you took your class and you measured how tall everybody is. And just to make this interesting, I'm going to split the class up into men and women. We are measuring height in meters here. All right. So we're not doing feet and inches. So you measure, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. We measured six men and six women. These are all their measurements for the men and for the women and we calculated an average here. Now when you calculate an average, of course you can use your rules for sig figs. You're gonna do a bunch of addition and then you're gonna divide by an exact number because you're counting up how many measurements you actually took. So if I'm just using my rules of sig figs, uh, I should have three decimal places in each of these answers. So you can see I have three decimal places in each of these answers. Well, when you have a set of data, you can calculate a standard deviation. That is often considered an error in the measurement. So my standard deviation for my set of men, my data over here, is 0 0.07. So I need to change how I rounded that average. I need to now round to the hundredths place. So this is my correct average that corresponds with the error in that measurement. Okay, so let's do the same thing over here with the women. Again, initially I rounded to that third decimal place because that's where my measurements were, but I calculated the standard deviation. I found the standard deviation to be 0.1. So that means I need to round to the tenths place. So therefore my average becomes simply 1.6. Now you know how to apply the real rule for significant figures. Now this is something that you will run across more in analytical classrooms than general chemistry classrooms. However, it's quite useful, especially when you have a measurement and an error associated with it. Of course, if you need to review just your simple rules for addition, subtraction, and multiplication division, I will have links for those videos and make sure you keep counting those sig figs. Thanks for watching.